We'll be joined by the spokesperson of the Aya family and president of the Aya Foundation, Mr. Aya Aya Abine. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us tonight once again on Talking Point. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Mimi. You know how great I feel when I'm by you. Thank you so much once again for coming. Mr. Aya, Aya Abine, you're just coming back from Nigeria. It's not your first trip to that part of the continent to see the condition of uh, displaced persons from the conflicted northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon. Uh, what were your observations? Yeah, um, it's the fifth trip in six months. We thank God for the graces. i just give you an anecdote to explain what's happening there. Before going there on this fifth trip, um, I have Paul and wife, the pioneer founders of the foundation, they instructed us to bring back some of our girls. So we had a big list of 50 people, and we ended up having a small list, we reduced it to 10 people. So I went there, and from amongst the 10, seven were pregnant. Among the seven, my cousin, you saw the images, very painful memories. We came back with two of the refugees, girls, one is on the way. So that gives you an idea of what's happening there. The girls are getting pregnant, some of them through rape, like my cousin. The boys are begging on the streets to survive. Our great-grandparents and our grandparents are dying because of lack of medication and of hunger. Our mothers are doing the most despicable of things to feed their kids. That's what is happening in Nigeria. And the people back home who have a voice are rather talking politics and elections. It's a shameful thing. So, so after going there and meeting these people, you've talked about their deplorable uh, living conditions. Do you think that uh, they are having the impression of ever maybe coming back to their respective localities because the government has time and again indicated that the people should return to their respective localities and that peace has returned. We saw the ministers that have been visiting these regions recently indicating that the situation is normalizing. Is that the impression that you saw there in Nigeria? How do people return to their localities when their houses have been burned down to ashes? How do they return to those same places when they have those memories of some of their family members burnt in houses? I don't think even in ancient Siberia, or during the Second World War, the atrocities that are being committed in Anglophone Cameroon, if you can call it that way, were committed that time. People burned in their houses. How do people come home when the few try to come home and get some of their belongings to go back there and survive? Because it's safer in Nigeria than in those Anglophone regions. How do they come? When some of them who come are shot. We're told of a refugee who came into Ekok to buy some food stuff, and when they discovered he was a refugee, he had a refugee card, he was arrested. How do those people come home? Where did they come and stay? The houses are down to us. So there, there are no accompanying measures put in place by the government to receive the, 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 the refugees. So the, 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 their comeback is not reassuring enough. Anglophone lives do not matter to the government. If Anglophone lives matter, the government would have unleashed, acknowledged the presence of refugees over there. Look, it's been two years. We've had a number of speeches from those who matter. They are talking about refugees from another country who are up north and from another country that are in the east. They are going on national and international campaigns for them. And their own citizens, because I call those people Cameroonians until proof of the contrary, their nationality has not changed. Their own citizens, no noise. They don't care about them. They rather die there. That's the story. And I believe if all of them die there, that people in high places will be very happy. They don't care about them. They don't care about them. At there, all. there is the humanitarian aid initiative put in place by the government. It's a to, sham. To take care of internal displays just started. You saw how uh, gifts were and were and food stuff were being distributed to inhabitants of to Papua, twenty people. One of the most hit localities as mm. far as this anglophone crisis is concerned. Mm. We saw a similar gesture in Momo Division of the Northwest Region Thick. of Cameroon, and the government is planning to do more. Why are you pessimistic about this initiative? Mimi, it is better to believe salvation is coming tomorrow from heaven. I believe strongly that it is possible for Jesus to come down in flesh and blood tomorrow morning for the last judgment than to believe in this thing. It's a sham. What is the greatest humanitarian aid you can give to people than releasing their fathers, their brothers that are in detention? The whole nation, it's not just the Anglophones, are clamoring. Release these people. Can you think of the stress 
that a mother, a sister, a brother is going through, going to detention three times a day. My dad was locked up when he was kidnapped by people, forces of law and order, locked up for eight months. I know what it means. Going to detention three times, four times a day, feeding your dad, feeding your brother, feeding your mom. What greater relief can you give to a people than releasing your people that are in detention? They won't even need those things again, if at all they're even destined towards them. And you talk of humanitarian aid. The greatest thing that can be done is a ceasefire. So what are you doing? You're calling the hen, the hen is coming, you're giving him granites and whatever, corn and whatever, those grains. And when he comes very close, you get the kids and you kill them, the hen goes away. You send some more grains, you feed it very fast, so that you put to bed, bring more kids, comes and you kill them. The greatest thing that can be done is a ceasefire. You can't be killing people, burning people in the houses, and you're giving them corn. It's a shame. It's a disgrace. Mr. Aya Aya, the United Nations Human, uh, 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 United Nations, uh, High Commission, uh, High for, Commission refugees. for Refugees is equally Nigeria preoccupied about the situation of uh, Anglophone refugees in Nigeria, like you or Ella indicated. Mm. Uh, when you go there, what is your evaluation of the relief, uh, supplies, aid from the UN, uh, HCR so far to the uh, displaced persons? To the refugees there are a number of places i've gone to that the u.n has not stepped foot there or when they've come they've come in their luxurious air-conditioned cars possibly to just come and get some images and whatever they're trying but it is far from very far i'm not sure they're providing three percent of the relief that is needed i don't know your reasons but i believe if they can cut down it's just what just like what the government is doing if they can cut down their expenditure on luxury just the air condition in your cars it can get sleepers for those kids that have sleepers okay i went to benway state then i was stopped by them from giving food to our people they stopped me we didn't understand why they made some calls and said we cannot give food we need to go and ride to abuja and wait for abuja to authorize us to go and give our people food in benway and while they were saying that my cousins kids they were running from the camps they heard we had come they came and embraced me and I told him, look, these are even my cousins here. They said, no problem. Even though you are your cousins, you need to write to Abuja to get permission so from happened? Abuja. Did you finally they sent me accomplish back. your mission? No, they sent me back. Okay. So I delivered nothing to Beno State. A shame. And my aunt is there. person who, I can say, brought me up and took care of my dad when he was growing. His sister, direct sister in that camp, Mami Sofina. She's there with those kids. And look at the people they're taking care of. Mr. There was Mr. 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 Aya Aya, the problem is there. It has been going on for, for several months now. They, 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 we are now seeking for solutions. Have you a series of proposals or recommendations that you could give to the government of Cameroon as per the problems of those that are internally displaced, the refugees in Ebola, Nigeria? If you were to give some recommendations or solutions to this problem of refugees and internally displaced, what would be these recommendations? Well, I don't know if those people even listen because a lot of people have said the same things and they go, you see, they are consistent in wrong. I don't know why they keep on being consistent in wrong. If I could just remind them, there is no way we can go about this without calling for a ceasefire. It's he who declares war. That calls for a ceasefire. We know we declared war. And once you declared war, I hear people saying no, the government has legitimacy in violence how can you say that kind of a thing anyway that's for them once you declare war you recognize that there is somebody if it's you they just send some two people to come and pick you up you and me but they declare war so they have recognized that there is some big body opposing their whatever on the other side so they have to declare a ceasefire 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 and we draw the troops we don't need the troops there the population of those areas is considering the troops as enemies they are their enemies they can pretend and say bonjour and bonsoir but the area, the question the area. That's why nothing is moving between both of them. And I don't know how on earth we would ever reconcile the harmony that existed between the population of those regions and the military ever again. We draw the troops. We need the police there. As the people who have done a lot of bogus saying, the police is your friend. Though in Cameroon is the contrary. But we need the police that we don't need the troops. To play now, their role as law enforcement. Yes, officials. and once you call a key ceasefire, if the other side does not respect the ceasefire, then you have every legitimacy. To come in again and say, okay, we call for a ceasefire, and these people are not respecting the terms of the ceasefire. How do children even go to school? In this atmosphere, like you said, about back to school, mm -hmm. do you think that is suitable, comfortable enough for schools or classes to effectively resume in the two Anglophone regions? We saw the SDO for Momo Division calling on parents 
to ensure that their kids are sent to school come September 2018. That was a drama he was doing. I was in Munya Market yesterday. I went to Munya Market the day before. I was in small, great supermarket. You see, even the business people are telling you that they don't believe there will be school. There are no books or pens in the market. When we were going to school, Mimi, that time, those, those, those days ago, I was even asking you out that time. When we were going to school, <laughs> three <laughs> weeks before, it's a school resumption. No, a month before. You see the books. They even knock your door. All those people with those old books, can you buy books, exchange? There is nothing. So everybody believes that there is nothing. Nothing of such would happen. But I have a different opinion to this. You see, those advancing, those clamoring for the no school resumption, are hiding behind the safety alibi. It's not safe. I think that's the weakest of arguments to put forth concerning school resumption. Okay, where is safe? People have gone into hospitals, the no-go area, pulled out people in hospitals and shot them. Nurses have been killed. Ambulances are shot. Are the hospitals safe? No. Have we ghosted the hospitals? No. We're still going to the hospitals. The streets, the greater majority of deaths have been on the streets and in the bushes and the homes. You remember the Tebbit? A whole family killed. Even a one-year-old killed. Killed. A whole family. Yes, uh, Have we I should them? know that uh, Barista Bobala actually talked about it. Good. So a good guy doing a good job, Barista Bobala. Have we ghosted the homes? No. Have we ghosted the streets? No. Are they safe? No. The churches, the no go area. Men of God have been killed. The churches have been attacked. One of them, to their knowledge, so has been burned. So, so what can be done? I'm coming. To... So, are the churches safe? No. Are people going to church? Yes. So, the safety complaint is the weakest complaint you can put forth to say people should not go to school. I prefer saying this. I am a, we are humanitarians. We are about saving and preserving lives and improving on human lives. So, we can only say education for everybody. What do I mean? Those in the bushes need education. It's not just education for those in towns and those in the French speaking part. Those in the bushes, education for them. Those in the refugee camps, they need to come back and go to school. Those in detention, my good friend Babila, a young guy, he was picked up and just taken to Kondengi. What's this guy? We don't even know. He too soon. He needs he to go education. to school. And those, all of them, Mr. Yuktabe, his cabinet that said, uh, the, the Manchus, the parents and all that, they are parents. They need to be out of detention to send their children to, send to school. Children to school. That remains the question, right? When there is a ceasefire, there's going to be possible. Everything will be possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Aya Aya. I've been there for